Hi everyone, Ian Ramsey here, and I'm here to talk about motivation. We are in a moment when many people are struggling with motivation. It's understandable. We're isolated, our lives and schedules and habits have been disrupted, and the usual parameters of life have changed. Many of the students I teach are having a hard time with being motivated, as are many adults. I get it. But this is also an opportunity. Think of this as a sabbatical where we have the chance to delve into the things that we're passionate about, if we choose to. Wouldn't it be great to look back on this period and to say, I made really good use of that time. You could learn to play the guitar, or teach yourself coding, or to improve at juggling, or develop a meditation practice, or improve your relationships. So that all sounds good, but it's easier said than done. The hard part is getting motivated, right? So how to do that? Through neuroscience, we actually know the recipe for motivation, and I can tell you that it's not waiting to be inspired. As a rule, real motivation is not about looking outside of yourself for inspiration, but instead it's about looking inside and cultivating an internal locus of control. Neuroscience shows us that motivation is made up of a recipe that includes passion, purpose, curiosity, goals, mastery, autonomy, pride, and fear. Now, a couple of those things, pride and fear, can be outward looking, but those are usually not the things that are going to sustain you in the long term. If you're operating from fear, you're only going to go so far. Whereas if you really look inside of yourself and reflect on your own personal interests and curiosities and purpose, you're digging a deep well that you can drink from forever. If you look at anyone in the world who's at the top of their field, they're usually not operating from a place of pride or fear, but instead they're operating from passion and purpose. And they're usually really curious. These are the people we call high achievers, and the people who change the world. When Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in prison, he used that time to train for life after prison, which helped him leading South Africa out of apartheid. And while in quarantine for a year, Newton invented his theories of gravity, optics, and early calculus. And Shakespeare wrote King Lear and Macbeth in quarantine. So the question is, how do you cultivate curiosity, passion, and purpose so that you can find motivation? How do you use this moment to reflect on what you're really interested in and you're passionate and curious about and pursue it? So here's an exercise that might help you to find your way into intrinsic motivation. The first thing is to start by making a list of 20 things that you're interested in and curious about, maybe even passionate. It could be anything, bowling, yoga, particle physics, Bolivian history, quilting, Minecraft, it doesn't really matter. But just making that list of 20 things will probably get you thinking and probably excited. The second thing is to take each of those things and come up with a possible goal related to it. It could be learning a lacrosse trick or making it to the next level of a computer game or reading a book or setting a personal record for push-ups or doing one push-up. The third thing is to make a list of 20 problems that you see in the world that need to be solved. They could be big world problems like climate change or cancer, or you could be thinking about how to, your town needs a recycling program. The fourth thing is to put all those lists next to each other and find the connections between them. I think you'll find that you'll be surprised by the connections you might find. Who knows? You might make some connections that no one in the world has ever made. Maybe you could use a love of music to write songs about human water rights. Or you could organize a basketball tournament to raise money for your town's fire department. Or you could decide that getting into a certain college will help you get a PhD so that you can solve cancer. The point of this is to connect your passion with something that is bigger than you. Because when we connect with something larger than ourselves, we develop a sense of purpose. And we'll probably develop community with people who are also passionate about those same things. That sense of passion gives us motivation, and that sense of purpose gives us motivation. And the more motivated we are, the more likely we are to take action and then gain mastery, which gives us the positive neurochemicals like dopamine, which gives us even more motivation. And by stacking those motivations, we build momentum. As we get more skilled and use those skills in public, we get positive feedback and get even more motivation. That's the kind of motivation that can help you to do your schoolwork, if doing well in school will help you to achieve your goals, 
or will help you to work at your job, or practice your instrument, or volunteer somewhere. The great Irish poet William Butler Yeats once said that education is not about filling a bucket, but lighting a fire. Unfortunately, in a world of standardized tests and college admissions, filling the bucket sometimes puts out the fire. Many people are not in touch with the fire in their belly. But the people who have that fire in their belly, that passion and purpose and curiosity, are the people who are going to have the deepest, most powerful sources of motivation, who will solve problems and change the world and be recognized and rewarded for it. So, make a list of passions, then a list of goals related to those passions, then a list of problems to solve, and then find connections between those and see what gets you excited. You might even find what gets you motivated. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.